Hi there, today I'm going to show you how to add camera shake to your cameras in Unity. To start off, let's create a simple C Sharp script. We'll call it Camera Shaker. Let's open this in Visual Studio. We're going to create a coroutine for the camera shake. Make sure you're using system.collections. Camera shake coroutine. To make sure it's working, let's give it a float duration and create an elapsed time here, starting out at zero seconds. And while elapsed is smaller than duration, we're gonna be doing our stuff. Make sure you put in yield return null here. Also, don't forget to add to the elapsed time, just elapsed plus equals time dot delta time. And then to finish it off, we're gonna add a debug.log. I'd like to run this coroutine every time I press the space bar. So in update, I'm gonna check if the space bar is pressed. I'm using the new input system, so I'll have to do it this way. And we're just gonna start the coroutine in here. Okay, let's quickly test if that works. Make sure to put it somewhere on the camera. And now whenever I press the space bar, you can see one second later the coroutine is finished. Okay, now we can actually get onto the shaking part of the code. Now before we do that, I wanna quickly explain what camera shake we're gonna use. Now there's three varieties, constant, linear, and exponential. We're gonna be focusing on how to do the exponential variety, where it decays quickly, as opposed to the other varieties where it stays strong. This is also the sort of camera shake you'll see in real life, one that dies out quickly. So to achieve this, we're going to want to have a float here called current magnitude. It's gonna start off as one and it'll end up going to zero. And we're gonna use this whenever we displace our camera. So while the camera's shaking, we're going to wanna to have a float x equal random dot value, which is a value from zero to one. Now we want our camera to shake in both a positive and negative direction. So I'm going to subtract 0.5 from here. If I add some brackets now, all we have to do is multiply this by the current magnitude. And if we copy this and exchange it for the y, now all we have to do is make our transform dot local position equal a new vector three with these coordinates. Now, right now, the current magnitude is also staying at one constantly. We're also going to want to decrease it. So we'll take our current magnitude and say it's equal to one minus, then we take the elapsed time and divide it by the duration, the total duration. Then we're going to want to square this, so you can copy this again. Squaring it is what gives us our exponential fall off. If we just were to use one of these, that would be a linear fall off. And if we were to get rid of it entirely, it would stay at one and it would be constant. Anyway, instead of this coroutine saying that it is finished, we'll just put in that the transform.local position uh, will be reset to vector 3.0. Now, before we hit play, we're going to have to create a parent here for our camera object. This way we can set the position here always to zero and it won't matter. And we'll still be able to move the parent around and the camera here will still be at zero. This will allow it to shake and move at the same time. Anyway, let's hit play and try that out. Okay, now you can see if I hit space, the camera shakes a little bit. Now currently this is just for the position. It's moving it at a perpendicular plane to wherever the camera is looking at. You could add another flow to your Z for the Z direction, but in my experience, uh, it's not very nice when it moves also forward and backwards. So I prefer using just the X and Y coordinates instead. Great, I mean the camera shakes now, but we'd also like a bit of control over how hard it shakes. Let's add a float to do that. We'll call it position offset strength. And all we have to do is multiply our X and Y here by this offset strength. And then that way we can control exactly how strong we want it to be. Uh, we'll also have to give a strength in here. We'll do something like five for now. Great, now the shake is much stronger and we can of course change it in the code. Okay, we've done the camera shake with the position. Now let's do it with rotation. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna have a vector three and then we're going to have our camera look at it. So we'll call it the look at vector. We'll vector three dot lerp between the forward direction where a camera is looking at and a random point inside the unit circle. We'll lerp using the current magnitude. So what this will do now is it'll always take the direction that the camera is looking at and the furthest our camera can randomly shake into now is uh, perpendicular to where the camera was looking at on this circle here. And as it decays, it'll just randomly pick a point inside it 
and get closer to the vector 3.4 word where it's looking at. Now we of course also want to be able to control the strength of this, so we'll add another float for that. All we're going to do is take our float here, lerp amount, and we just have to multiply it by our rotation offset. We'll give it a value here of 0.15. Okay, we also shouldn't forget to actually commit our rotation change here. So we'll just take the transform.local rotation and make that equal to quaternion.look at and we'll take our look vector. Finally, all we have to do is reset our rotation afterwards. So we'll do transform.localRotation is equal to quaternion.identity. Okay, let's save that and try it out. Okay, now whenever we hit space, you can see the camera moves and it even rotates a bit. Great, we've got it working. I'd like to iron out a few things. First thing is if we spam it here, I'm spamming the space bar, you can see that the rotation doesn't really work. That's because there's multiple coroutines going on right now. The fix for this is really simple. It's just whenever we call the coroutine, we need to first stop all coroutines. I'd also like to expose these values to the inspector so that way we can play around with them. Okay, we've exposed the variables. Since our default rotation strength here always goes from zero to one, I'll also add a range attribute here. Okay, you can see here our exposed variables. You can also see that the rotation strength is on a slider now. If we go into play mode, we can now also adjust how strong the different things are. So we can make the rotation way stronger or we can make it just the position that's way stronger. Or we can even turn one off entirely. If we only wanna use position here, we can do something like this. Or if we only want to use rotation, we can do something like this. Okay, great. That was our simple camera shake coroutine. Now, if you ever want to use this in 2D, you can use the exact same script uh, and just ignore the rotation offset strength uh, because you generally don't want to rotate your camera uh, too much in 2D. So you can just set that to zero, but otherwise you can use the exact same script in 2D and 3D. If you're using this, all you have to do is call this shake method here on whenever you, for example, spawn an explosion or when a player dies or something, all you have to do is just call it, give in some values and boom, your camera will shake. If you're looking to get an even more advanced camera shake system, uh, what you can do is use Cinemachine. They have an extension here, the impulse listener. And what you can do with this is basically broadcast impulse events, for example, like an earthquake or explosion, whatever, uh, at a certain position here, like with this game object. And it'll take account all of the complicated physics behind that to get a more advanced system if you're into that. But anyway, that was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in further improving your cameras, you can check out my Cinemachine tutorial here. Thanks for watching.